Robots are never coming, they'll never be here, except, well, I guess some robots have been used for decades now, uh, really generations, and they're coming online quicker and quicker as you find all kinds of new applications. I've got a very special guest today, not one guest, but two guests, joining me in a sort of mix of speakerphone and on uh, the stream yard here. Uh, I've got with me Dr. Scott and Liz. We're going to find out what they're up to. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> Guys, what is going on? What am I looking at? So, Brian, what you are seeing is a burger that was built by a bot. And actually not a bot, but two bots. And I'm not talking about the two arms that are in that one, also the bot around the corner. And what we should do is talk to the brainchild of this setup, Liz Chong, and her journey on being able to bring robots to the restaurant industry. Take it away, Liz. Thank you. So what you see behind us um, is basically an automation that assembles burgers. Um, as a customer orders a, a hamburger through a menu that's, that's no different from most you know, restaurants, um, as it goes to the conveyor, the onions, lettuce, tomatoes, and pickles is cut fresh and placed onto the burger. Then it goes and all the sauces that the customers choose will be actually placed onto the burger. Finally, it goes to the uni where it closes the clamshell, grabs the french fry, and then that's it. The burger's done. So for germaphobes, this sounds like the best burger ever made. Yeah. Nobody's touching my hamburger with their greasy human paws. And uh, the consistency can be observed through the window, I assume. And uh, yeah. So uh, what what was the motivation behind it? What 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 kind of mad scientist comes up with such things? <laughs> so... The motivation behind this was just the fact that I've been doing food for two decades, uh, fast, fast casual specifically for two decades. And as I was managing my restaurants at that time, I realized that I actually really didn't have control of my cost of goods. Uh, you know, you, you know, employees would throw things in the trash, um, take things home maybe, right? But with this, when I developed this, the whole idea was how does an operator actually operate their restaurant and actually know the true, um, you know, their key spending and actually how much they're really making. And that's just, you know, from an operator. Then as a customer, how do you make your experience better? And truthfully with food, the only thing that you need is consistency, transparency, and efficiency. Um, the worst thing I think is that when you go to a restaurant and you order something, you know, like, oh, it's so good. You come back the next time and the, the chef made it different, right? And so for me, I, and the other thing is like, you know, you said, hey, I'm allergic to onions. I don't want onions. And then all of a sudden someone places an onion here. You get to actually see all this yourself. Um, so the idea was just to help the operator as well as the customer and make the food experience better. So, uh, Scott, how did you hear about this? What's your involvement in the in the Mad Science Project? No involvement whatsoever, except I think about a month ago, I saw on X a uh, press release from uh, ABB uh -huh. showing the burger bar which is actually here in Breaking Dawn Restaurant in Los Gatos. Right. So this is South Bay, I guess, for those familiar with the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah. Uh, and it's a sleepy little town in a way. It's a wonderful little town with nice little shops and cafes and everything else. And the last thing that you would expect to see when you walk into a restaurant like this is that there will be industrial robots sitting back here Can you show assembling your food. And we're going to show you, we're going to give you a tour in just a second what's going on. So this becomes a very interesting kind of experience. I had to come out and see it myself. <laughs> this is my involvement. I had to see it. And I will tell you, to, to Liz's point, consistency really is key. That's why Starbucks was able to grow so much, is it is consistent wherever you go, uh, with very few exceptions. And if there is an exception, they just fix it. Is it the best coffee out there? Um, I don't know. I like it, but, um, you know, there are places, people who have their preferences for something else. So it's a great idea. Let's take a look. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to suddenly turn into a videographer. <laughs> I've been advised by a lot of people. I am like the world's worst videographer. So we're going to go through, I'm going to clumsily figure out, to get the phone to point in the right direction. And then we're going to get a tour. So let's give it a try. I love it. And Liz, if you want to bring that phone so we can hear you. So Brian, um, all of our veg all of our burgers are made fresh. The patties are made by a chef. It's placed onto a clamshell, and then once it's on the clamshell, it rides the conveyor. At this point, where it's at the veggie station, 
the onions, lettuce, and tomatoes and pickles are cut fresh and placed onto the burger um, fresh. Every time. Over to the sauce. Every, right? every single time. Every single time. So it, it, I, I, you might have missed it, but the client before, she wanted no sauce. It'll omit sauce right in front of her. Mm -hmm. um, but here, so the onions, the lettuce, tomatoes, it depends on what the customer orders, whatever it is that they order, um, it'll be placed, it'll be cut fresh. So if you can see it's in whole, um, and it's sliced after order. Mm. Then it goes over here to the sauce station, at which point there's four different types of sauce that can be put on the burger. The customer can, can, can choose to omit sauce, extra or, or, or less sauce. Um, this right here is a sauce dispenser where it'll dispense the sauce onto the burger. And then at the final station, it's a two-arm robot that closes the clamshell, and then it grabs the fries, and then the order's completed. So if somebody wants... The one thing I want to yes. tell you is that that's an ABB robot. That's known as a Yumi robot. Okay. Not a Yummy robot. It's a Yumi robot, okay? Spelled Y-U-M-I. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's not Yummy. It's yeah, to be determined. It looks finger-licking good to me, Scott. I... Uh, you know, and the customer is always right. So is there, when you're placing the order, I assume you can place the order a, a number of different ways online or in the store, but uh, is there a box for extra onions or extra pickles? So in terms of extra onions or extra pickle, pickles, basically right now, the each each burger is programmed to cut one as normal. Mm -hmm. One slice of onions, one, like, one slice of tomato, and then every slice you'll get three pieces of pickles. If you want it extra, then everything just be cut two times. Mm -hmm. But it's but it's it's there. I say no onions on mine. Uh, the next one right behind. You know, I'm ordering four burgers four different ways, and we watch right. them roll out. We want we can tell whose is whose by looking at it, and that's it. Right. It's done. And these onions were not chopped last night. They were not chopped this morning. They were cut right there in front of me. In front of you, correct. Almost makes you cry. Or it would if it wasn't for the protective glass. When it comes to dad jokes, there's a competition between me and Brian. <laughs> yes, that much is apparent. So, I know I can't help it. It's it happens. Uh, so, uh, what uh, you know is this going to be coming to more locations? What what's the plan from here? How has been the reception to it? You know, I think that at first, I think when people hear about robots, everyone's just like, wait. Like, are you taking away jobs? You know, they're a bit hesitant. But I think that when Burger Bots is actually here, people get to taste the quality of the food. They realize that it's actually, you know, it's not vending machine food. It's food that's actually made from a chef. It's fresh. Um, and there's still service very much involved. I think that everyone's been very excited. I think that the acceptance rate, um, you know, like if you can see earlier, you know, the, the two clients that we had were people that are probably not tech savvy, right? But they came in here just for Burger Bots. And so I think that, you know, Burger Boss has been able to change the mind of what robotics, what a collaborative robot system or a collaborative system can be um, in the food, in, in, in a restaurant. So it is, it is collaborative because remember, Brian, you know, there are humans left there. Okay, mm. sorry. Mm, got to keep them, got to keep them hidden and busy. My, my question. So the biggest question is, um, what's the restaurant, where are you located and how can people come see it? We have the first dual concept restaurant here in the Bay area in Las Gatos, California. In the morning, it's called breaking dawn brunch from 8 AM to three Tuesday to Sunday. And from four to nine daily, it's called Firstborn Los Gatos and burger bots. Serves both restaurants as a sous chef, and it's sitting right inside Los Gatos, California. Okay. Uh, so then my question for the audience is, when are you going, and are you going to send me footage so I can see it? Because I won't be able to get down there until July. So I will I will come and harass you then and uh, put, put your bot to the test. Uh, how expensive is this robot setup? You know, in terms of me... Because I invented this, it took a lot of engineering time. Um, selling this product, you know, right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the best pricing uh, for mass production. Oh. I, I, I completely, so for the, the, the best thing about me is that I've built a handful of restaurants and I know how expensive it is. And I think for me, the goal here is that I sell this tool um, and that the person who purchased it for me makes their return from their investment back in two years. 
Wow. So that's that's the plan is this isn't just for you. This is something that's going to go bigger and wider. Absolutely. My, my goal here is to prove my concept um, and to make sure that I work out the kinks myself. But at the same time, the goal is to help as many individuals get this robot into their restaurant as possible. Now, that's uh, pretty fun. But what about folks who really prefer the experience of being yelled at and sworn at by the chef? You know, like I said, this doesn't take away a chef. I don't believe in taking away a chef. I don't believe in taking away a bartender. Um, like I said, the burger, the patty itself, it's still made in the back of the house. The buns are still toasted by a chef in the back of the house. What what Burger Bots really essentially did was it took away the jobs that people really don't want to do. You know, a chef wants to go into the restaurant and they want to they want to create and they want to make the stuff that matters. What we did was we took the job of cutting onions, lettuce, and tomatoes away so we take a job that people really don't really want to do it has the most turnover in the industry so uh how many different uh condiments let's talk talk through it you said you got pickles tomatoes onions and then three or four sauces yeah so currently for this for this application we have four um in terms of the extent the, the extent of how many how many vegetables um anyone wants we can add more or less mm -hmm. the same with the sauces so as of right now we have four of each but in the future, um, if someone wanted just two, that's fine. And if they wanted 10, very doable. Remember, Lee came from the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. She did not come from manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know a lot of manufacturers who would be afraid to take on a project like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. And, which is why they're not automated. Yet here we have it. So it was like a lot of engineering and a lot of invention that came along with this. There's a reason why she started in 2018. <laughs> Years, yeah. to kind of get to this point because there was a lot of research that had to go on, a lot of design. A lot of R&D. Mm -hmm. And the thing you remember is that when you're dealing with robots, you're dealing with robot safety standards. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with food, you're dealing with food safety standards. And health, yes. She mm -hmm. No, she has to be an expert in both. Easy enough. Great. So, let's, so we're going to do a walkthrough of the system. Let's check it out. Okay. Okay. Here it is. The burger goes down the conveyor. It stops. Because someone said no pickles, no tomatoes. At which point the onions, the lettuce and tomatoes are all being cut. Oh, I see. Oh, that's how it does it. I get it. Check out the ring. It makes sure everything falls in where it's supposed to. There you go. The sauce is being dispensed. And then right here, it goes to the Yumi, where it co it takes off the ring, closes the clamshell, and grabs the fry. Ah. I didn't understand what was meant by the ring. That makes more sense. And there we go. Well, that's pretty fascinating. Oh. There it is. So when did this debut? April 29th. And uh, how much have you been able to stress test it since then? Oh, we test it every day. <laughs> but but it's what it's kind of volume does it get up to? Um. Right now, I think the most that it's made in a day was on our opening day, 
which was close to 500 burgers. Oh, okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's great. So, uh, fascinating stuff. You got the burgers, you got the fries. Yeah. It's all, uh, it's very exciting guys in the comments. I do want you to tell me, are you going, when are you going? And are you sending me a video? Because of course, uh, that's all stuff that I need to need to see. Um, and then of course I will uh, myself try to get down there, um, the last week of July when I'm going to be in okay. town for the X takeover. Uh, and you know, obviously, uh, when I say in town, I mean, roughly in town, closer than I've been in a year. So, uh, it seems like something where I would be interested in making a special trip just for that, because that's pretty cool. Um, so, uh, anything right, else? Right. Yeah. That I forgot um, to ask. I hope that the last video I tried to stay as sturdy as possible so that you can have good footage of it. I'll definitely send you everything I have. I might be out of town myself yep. to meet with someone for robotics at the end of July. So let's coordinate. Uh, sure. Over text. sure. Sure. So guys uh, in the comments, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it comments for this video. I apologize to tell you folks are mandatory. I should have said it sooner, but now, you know, and I want to thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Scott, for introducing us and everybody else, you know, like, subscribe, do what you do. Tell me, should I go? And I absolutely, of course, will go if I have the opportunity. And everybody else, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots uh, when you're enjoying a juicy burger. Thank you so much.